Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for i5 for the iPhone is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle, the fast and simple way to sell your used gadgets. Find out what your used iPhone, iPad, and other Apple products are worth at Gazelle dot com. Aloha, and welcome to i5 for the iPhone, episode 104. This is the show that covers the latest iPhone news, apps, tips, and tricks. I am Sarah Lane, your guide to all things iPhone and iOS. Let's do this. Number one, we got an email from Manny, who's about to be doing some European travel. Lucky you, Manny. Here's his question. I'm traveling to Europe the first week of September, and my iPhone 5S is still under contract with AT&T here in the States. In Paris, I found travel-wifi.com to be a great solution, but my three days in Rome are going to kill me. What can I do? All I really want is data to check in and upload some pics. I hope your experiences in Europe can help me out. Well, Manny, I definitely have some experience with this over the years, some better than others. I will say it's gotten better, though, at least with US carriers. For example, I use Verizon, and it used to be something like 100 megabytes for $100, which is completely ludicrous the way that I use data. Just would have wiped me out financially. Now it's something like $25 per 100 megabytes, which you don't have to pay for beforehand. It just tallies up as you roam. And Verizon was really good about sending me a text each time I was getting charged. Now Manny says he's going to Rome. World-class city. There's going to be a lot of Wi-Fi there. Luckily, we're living in some modern times, so there's kind of Wi-Fi everywhere. Cafes, hotel lobbies, it's everywhere. Now, if you check Wi-Fi names and there's the cafe that you're sitting in and there's a little lock next to the Wi-Fi, ask the barista for the password. You're a paying customer. Chances are they're happy to give it to you. Now, this is not necessarily my advice for everybody. For example, when I was traveling in Europe recently, I just wanted to be connected whenever I felt like it. So data was really important to me. But Manny says he's just kind of looking to check into the internet and upload a few photos here and there. Save it for Wi-Fi. And turn off your data, by the way, which will not only keep your phone from roaming, but will drastically improve your battery life because your phone won't be searching for local carriers, which preserves battery. And that's probably the number one thing to do when you're traveling. Enjoy Rome. Number two. Earlier this week, I showed off an app called Wikipedia Mobile on iPad Today. By the way, if you aren't watching iPad Today, you're making me sad week after week. Why are you so mean to me? Anyway, I actually think that this app is even better on the iPhone, and that's why I'm going to talk about it again. Here's why. Wikipedia is basically text. You got some photos here and there, but it's basically text. You can easily pull it up in Safari on your iPhone or Chrome. That's the browser app I choose to use. And you can search for a term and it works perfectly, but it's not an app. Wikipedia Mobile is the app version of the mobile of Wikipedia and it's slightly slicker. You've got your daily article front and center. You can search for anything you want. You can save your searches. You can pull up a random article if you want to do the I'm feeling lucky type of a thing. I've actually had some fun with that. Learned a few things. You can view your search history. You can change the default language that Wikipedia searches within. And the whole thing works like a dream. Again, there is nothing in this app that you can't do just by going to wikipedia.org in your browser. But it looks a little better, and it's free, and it's always nice to have options. Number three. OK, when you think of Microsoft, quick, what comes to mind? Windows, Xbox, Washington State, celebrities? No, not celebrities. It's kind of strange that this is the company that made an iPhone app designed to help regular folk like you and me track the social media goings-ons of our favorite celebrities and articles about them and stuff like that. It makes no sense. But I tried it anyway. I went ahead and told Snippet, by the way, that Snippet with a three instead of an E, that my favorite celebrities were Jennifer Aniston, George Clooney, and the Wu-Tang Clan, which is completely true. So now I have a barrage of articles about Jennifer Aniston's recent weight gain and George Clooney's upcoming nuptials and some weird Wu-Tang stuff that I don't really care about. The app also suggests articles about other celebrities that I also don't really care about 
or I can search for someone specific that I'm not already following. So I'm not going to sit here and judge you if you like celebrity news. This is definitely an on-the-go mobile version of browsing gossip magazines in the grocery checkout line. Certainly works well. It does source from a bunch of different publications, which would probably surface in a Google News search if you did it that way. But this is a more organized way to read everything. But Microsoft, that part is strange. This episode of i5 for the iPhone is brought to you by Gazelle. Maybe you're ready to get that new iPad, there are some new rumors about it, or you're looking to get the new iPhone, looks like we're going to have an event soon. Gazelle wants to buy your used iPhone or iPad or smartphone. What you can do is lock in a price today and then send your gadget to Gazelle when you get your new one because Gazelle's offer is good for 30 days. Just go to gazelle.com, that's G-A-Z-E-L-L-E.com, and enter your item. Tell Gazelle the condition the item's in. Don't worry if it's a little beat up like my iPhone is. They'll, they'll even buy broken iPhones. Then you get that offer for any gadget that you want Gazelle to take off your hands, and they'll even throw in free shipping. When it's time to get paid, you get paid fast by check, PayPal, or for an extra 5%, an Amazon gift card. If you like Amazon, that makes perfect sense too. Benefits of Gazelle are vast. You get paid in cash, the payment is fast. It's risk-free, again, those offers are locked in for 30 days, and that gives you time to transfer your data, buy your new device, and set it up. Gazelle will even wipe your data for free. It's trustworthy, the company's paid more than $100 million to over 700,000 customers. I am one of them. It was really fun, feels like free money. It's not, but it feels that way. And easy, free shipping. Most items qualify for a free box, and there's a fast process. No listing hassles or trying to figure out what your item's worth. Gazelle does all that for you. So what is your iPhone worth? Take a minute. Go to gazelle.com to find out. Do it now, though, because as you know, your iPhone will lose value the longer you wait. Gazelle.com, and thanks to Gazelle for sponsoring this episode of i5. Number four. We got an email from Gary who's got a recommendation for a good app for teachers and for students. And even though I don't have my own student to test this out on, I know a lot of you are parents and I want to definitely pass along apps for your kind, for your ilk that can make your lives better. So Gary writes, my son's teacher sent each student home with a flyer for an app that she was going to be using to send information about the students to the parents. The app is called Class Dojo, and it uses a code associated with each student given by the teacher and even lets the children build their own avatars and is very well designed. The teacher can give each student virtual stickers for participation or staying on task and so on. The developer recently added messaging functionality, which makes this app a must-have for teachers and parents, in my opinion. Anyway, thanks for everything y'all do over there. Twit, love the show. Well, thank you, Gary, for loving the show. And thanks for the recommendation. Class Dojo is free. And I'd love to know from any other parents out there, or teachers, if you're a teacher, maybe you're a teacher and a parent, if it's an app that you're using and, more importantly, liking. Finally, number five. Earlier in the show, we talked about Microsoft's weird celebrity app. What's going on there? Well, Google's also got a sort of odd app of its own, which is sort of like a capture the flag virtual game inside real world data from Google Maps. Are you interested? It's called Ingress. It's been on Android for a couple of years, but it just came to iOS, iPhone and iPad. As Google explains it, this is good, Ingress transforms the real world into a landscape for a global game of mystery, intrigue, and competition. Lock on established. Download the latest Intel package. You move through your world using your iOS device and then the Ingress app to discover and find sources of this mysterious energy. You can acquire objects to aid in your quest. You deploy technology to capture territory. And then you have allies with other players to advance the cause of, again, what Google calls the enlightened or the resistance. Portal key. Okay, so basically, yeah, it's like being in a gang to save the world, but it's a fake world on top of the real world, kind of Matrix-like, or kind of like fantasy football for life. The game is played globally, so your team can be basically anywhere, and there's an intelligence map where you can all communicate. Now before you say, eh, this crap ain't for me, which is exactly what I said yesterday, I will tell you that several of my coworkers are super into Ingress and think it's the most fun thing ever. So. Get five of your best friends together and install the app and find portals in your neighborhoods and go to town. By the way, there are a decent number of complaints that the game is crashing in the app reviews, but again, this is brand new to iOS. Otherwise, everyone seems to really like it. 
And that does it for this episode of I-5. Hope you had fun. All of the apps and links and other information from this show is at twit.tv slash I-F-I-V-E. You can email ideas, questions, or general feedback to us at I-5 at twit.tv. You can leave us a voicemail at 614 on I-5 or send us a video with an app review of your own. Haven't gotten one of those in a while. Get on it, people. I'm not here for my health. I am Sarah Lane, though, and I'll see you next week on I-5 for the iPhone.